There's been an explosion on a test stand in China, we've got details on India's exploration aspirations and Hubble is in safe mode again. It's Friday the 1st of December and there's much more to come this week in Spaceflight. Let's start off the episode with some good old rocket engine testing, although I'm not talking about China just yet. Firefly has announced this week it has finally fired up its new Miranda engine on the test stand. The company has been developing this engine for the last year and a half to support the upcoming Antares 330 and medium launch vehicle rockets in partnership with Northrop Grumman. The Miranda engine, powered by liquid oxygen and RP-1, produces about 1,000 kN of thrust, or basically a tad bit more than SpaceX's Merlin-1D. Both the Antares 330 and the medium launch vehicle share the first stage, with seven Miranda engines powering the first phase of flight, and the latter will also have a vacuum-optimized variant of the engine on its second stage. Firefly now wants to ramp up testing of this engine to do a full 206-second test firing in the near future. The Antares 330 rocket is set to launch from Wallops no earlier than mid-2025, supporting launchers of Northrop Grumman's Cygnus spacecraft, with the medium launch vehicle rocket set to debut later in the decade. If you're sitting there a bit confused, wondering what on earth the medium launch vehicle is, that's the new-ish name for Firefly's own medium lift rocket. It used to be called Beta. Northrop Grumman and Firefly will decide on a proper name before its first flight. This news comes just as Firefly prepares for the fourth flight of its Alpha rocket, increasing the launch tempo and rack up more and more flight experience. This flight, scheduled for later this month, should be carrying an experimental test satellite from Lockheed Martin, set to test a new type of electronically steered antenna in space. Firefly is also aiming to refine its rapid launch capabilities on this flight, hoping to improve the payload processing time from that of its earlier flight, Victus Knox, which was aimed precisely at testing rapid launch capabilities. After all the ups and downs that Firefly has seen in the last few years, it's definitely nice to hear more and more good news coming from the company as it aims to compete in a very crowded small and medium launch sector. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has gone into safe mode yet again. Yes, again. The agency confirmed earlier this week the telescope had actually gone into safe mode not once, but twice last month, with the first time happening on November 19th, although that first time it was quickly resolved. However, this second event is taking much more time to recover from, and it's all due to the same issue that has been keeping Hubble from performing cleanly over the last few years. Gyroscopes. The Space Telescope got six new and shiny gyroscopes installed during the last Hubble servicing mission, STS-125, back in 2009. Normally, it would use three of them as primary and the other three as backups, but over the last 14 years, these have degraded and now the Space Telescope is down to just three total, with no backups to rely on. The agency claims to be able to perform science with just one working gyroscope, although it would make things much more complicated. One of these three remaining gyroscopes has been the culprit for the recent switch to safe mode after having been confirmed as unstable, so it would seem like just being able to go up to Hubble and switch the gyroscopes for new ones would be a very straightforward way to solve this issue. Unfortunately, the Space Shuttle is no longer available to do that, they're all in museums, but as you probably know, Jared Isaacman has proposed to help save Hubble by both increasing its orbital altitude and perhaps doing repair work as well. We had him recently on NSF Live talking about his mission proposal, definitely check that out if you want to hear what he thinks should be done with Hubble. Regardless of what happens though, no one can't say this space telescope hasn't done great things in its lengthy career, and there's at least some hope NASA can continue its operations even if it is with less than the optimal number of three gyroscopes working. And now let's take a look at this week in launches. The Soyuz 2.1B rocket lifted off on November 25th at 2058 UTC from Site 43-4 at the Plesetsk Cosmodrome in Russia. The rocket was carrying an undisclosed payload to sun-synchronous orbit for the Russian Ministry of Defense. While the payload is unknown, it could potentially be a Razdan satellite, the first of a new generation of electro-optical reconnaissance satellites for the Russian military. We also had a Falcon 9 launch on November 28th at 0420 UTC from Space Launch Complex 40 in Florida. It was carrying a batch of 23 Starlink V2 mini-satellites into low-Earth orbit. 
The first stage for this mission, B-1062, was flying for a 17th time and it successfully landed on SpaceX's drone ship, just read the instructions. With this batch of Starlink, SpaceX has now launched a total of 5,513 satellites, of which 370 have re-entered and 4,543 are now in operational orbit. This morning we also had the launch of a Soyuz 2.1A rocket from Site-316 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Liftoff took place on December 1st at 0925 Universal, carrying the Progress MS-25 cargo spacecraft to the International Space Station. The vehicle is carrying about three tons of food, supplies, science experiments and propellant for the crew living aboard the orbital outpost. Docking with the ISS Poisk module is set to occur on December 3rd at 11.14 Universal. Prior to that though, the Progress MS-23 spacecraft that was docked to Poisk undocked from it on November 29th at 07.55. The spacecraft later re-entered over the South Pacific Ocean at around 11.40 UTC. ISS crew member Jasmine McBelly was able to capture shots of the Progress re-entry from the station as it happened. This next story also features pictures from space, but sadly, the destruction they show was not planned. Our good friend Harry Stranger used satellite imagery to spot a massive test stand explosion at the Xiquan Satellite Launch Center in China. Through various space-based imagery sources, Harry was able to nail down the timing of this explosion to some time between November 21st and November 22nd. This is not the first time this has happened though, both the explosion and Harry spotting it from space. Back in 2021, a similar explosion happened at the exact same location between October 10th and October 17th of that year. Back then, it was theorized that the test stand had been damaged due to a failed test of a Kwajo 11 solid rocket motor. It is believed that this test stand is used to test these kinds of solid rocket motors by XPACE, a subsidiary of the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation, obviously known as KSEC. This new explosion, just like the last one, should not affect launches from this center as the test stands are located far enough away to not have a major impact. But this could impact the flight of upcoming Kwajo rockets in the near future. These satellite images show the latest test stand explosion could have been with a smaller sized rocket motor, evidenced by the smaller footprint of the debris thrown around compared to the explosion that occurred in 2021. If that's the case, it may very well have been a test of a motor from the smaller Kwajo 1A rocket instead of the larger Kwajo 11, which was expected to fly again in the coming weeks. However, just like with the first time this happened, it is very unlikely we will hear any official confirmation or even acknowledgement of this failure from Chinese officials. Thankfully, through these Earth observation satellites, we are always able to uncover the good, the bad and the ugly with no filters. This week, the head of the Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, has given a detailed layout of the country's upcoming space exploration plans, and there's quite a lot to unpack. As part of this week's symposium from the Indian Society of Geomatics and the Indian Society of Remote Sensing, Sridhara Sumananth gave a presentation about the country's space ambitions for the near and far future, including a human landing on the moon by 2040. These plans are part of Indian's ambitions to expand its space activities beyond what's currently in the works, and some of them may sound familiar to those who have been watching this week in spaceflight. Back in October, India's Prime Minister directed the space agency to build a space station in orbit by 2035 and land an Indian astronaut on the moon by 2040. Samanath explained that this will be achieved by going through a series of increasingly more complex and more challenging missions in order to gain the knowledge needed to achieve these goals. Some of these missions include the potential for the country's Gaganyans crew spacecraft to dock to free-floating inflatable habitats in orbit in the middle of this decade. This would serve as a precursor to the launch of the first module of the upcoming space station in 2028 using the launch vehicle Mark III rocket. This rocket will see an upgrade in the coming years where its first stage will be replaced from using hypergolic propellants to using Kerolox. This will boost the rocket's performance but it won't be enough for the future ambitions of India in space. To that end, work is already underway on the next generation launch vehicle, a large and partially reusable launcher that should debut in the late 2020s or early 2030s. With this rocket, India plans to launch the remaining space station modules and complete the orbital complex in 2035 as directed as their Prime Minister. With some upgrades and human rating in place, the next generation launch vehicle will be used to send Indian astronauts to the moon. As outlined by ISRO's chief, India's first crew mission to the moon would actually go into lunar orbit and that could happen in the late 2030s. 
This would be followed by a lunar landing mission by 2040. Of course, in order to accomplish that, the agency also plans to increase the complexity of its robotic lunar missions. As we talked about in last week's episode, the Chandrayaan-4 will be India's first attempt at a lunar sample return mission. That mission now finally has a target date of 2026 and would be followed by increasingly more complex Chandrayaan missions that should test longer stays on the lunar surface, use of in-situ resource utilization, and much more. India's future space ambitions won't only expand in the human spaceflight realm, but also in other realms such as space surveillance or space-based navigation here on Earth. Samanath explained in his presentation the agency's intent to grow the current local positioning satellite constellation from five to seven satellites and eventually move to a global positioning satellite constellation with dozens of satellites in medium and geostationary Earth orbit. Science missions are also set to grow in ambition and scope, with the agency planning a Venus orbiter mission and a Mars lander to be flown within the next decade. ISRO is also planning on launching its own science observatories in space such as Exposat, ExoWorlds, INSIST or Daksha. Further technological developments are also planned for in-space robotic activities such as on-orbit refueling and repairs that will further benefit all of the other ambitions set by the agency over the next two decades. It definitely looks like India wants to position itself as another strong player in the global spaceflight sector and who can say no to more rockets and more peaceful exploration of space. Now let's take a quick glimpse at some other stories across space. This week ESA and Ariane Group set up a press conference to finally confirm when Ariane 6 will debut. If you remember from last week, Ariane 6 completed a long duration firing of its core stage out at its launch pad in French Guiana. During the conference, officials stated that while the test lasted 44 seconds shorter than expected, this was due to a very conservative test threshold that would not be used during launch. The test met all the objectives, so it was deemed successful anyways. Ariane 6's debut is planned to occur between June 15th and July 31st, and in between now and then, two more tests will be performed. These will serve more as extra tests rather than must-have tests. One will be on December 7th in Germany to test the upper stage of the Ariane 6 in unnominal situations, and another on December 15th to test the countdown sequence for Ariane 6 on the launch pad once again. If all goes well, the first flight hardware should arrive in French Guiana in February, followed by the start of the launch campaign in April. In more Ariane 6 related news, ESA has also tested a carbon fiber tank for a future upgrade of this rocket. ESA says the test tank, called Phoebus, was filled with liquid nitrogen and pressurized to 13 bar, passing the test with no leaks encountered. This test is part of the development of a future Ariane 6 upper stage made out of carbon fiber that will provide more performance to the rocket by lowering the dry mass of its upper stage. Hopefully, if this development program goes well, the upgrade could be implemented as early as 2026. The Chinese Manned Space Agency has finally released high-resolution pictures of the Tiangong Space Station that finally show in great detail the whole orbital complex. These photos were taken by the crew of Shenzhou-16 during a fly-around maneuver conducted shortly after its undocking back on October 30th. We can see the Tianzhou-6 spacecraft docked to the rear port of the Tiani module, the core module of the station, and also the Shenzhou-17 spacecraft docked to the front of this module. We can also see the station's robotic arm in stowed configuration on the Wenshen module. The pictures show the Chinese station as a whole in unprecedented detail, giving us a rag look at the hardware on the station. These pictures now join the list of iconic flyover shots of space stations like the ones taken of Skylab, the one from Soyuz TM-21's departure showing Space Shuttle Atlantis Dr. Mir, or the ones from the Soyuz TMA-20 departure showing Space Shuttle Endeavour docked to the International Space Station. It's sad news for Titanium quadcopter fans as NASA has delayed the Dragonfly mission from 2027 to 2028. The agency is also delaying the mission's formal confirmation that officially sets the schedule and cost of the mission. This is all due to the huge uncertainties in the budgets for the upcoming fiscal years 2024 and 2025. This is not the first science mission at NASA facing delays and budget issues, and rather it adds on to the list of missions affected by this issue. Frankly, I'm not even sure if there has ever been a science mission that hasn't been impacted. This is also not the first delay to this mission. Dragonfly was originally planned to launch in 2026, but then was moved to 2027, also due to budget pressure. Given all of the expected budget cuts over the next few years, it's definitely going to become harder for NASA to juggle all of the money for the science missions coming up in the next decade. 
And now let's take a look at what's coming up next week in spaceflight. After slipping two days to the right, the Falcon 9 launch of the first flight of South Korea's Project 425 is a now scheduled for December 1st at 1819 UTC. 24 more payloads are ride-sharing on this flight that will see the 17th flight of Booster B-1061. Another Falcon 9 is set to lift off from Florida on December 2nd at 0401 UTC, carrying another batch of Starlink V2 mini-satellites. Seven more backup opportunities are available during that same window, going up to 0758 Universal. We will then have a trio of launches from China, carrying yet unspecified payloads. The first of these should be a Changzheng 2C from the Jiquan Satellite Launch Center. Liftoff is scheduled to occur within a 23-minute window that opens on December 4th at 0402 UTC. The second launch could be the return to flight of the Ceres-1 rocket with the We Won't Stop mission from the Jiquan Satellite Launch Center. The 57-minute launch window opens on December 4th at 23.24 UTC. The third launch should be the second launch of the Zhilong-3 rocket, lifting off from a barge off the coast of China. The 45-minute launch window opens on December 5th at 19.17 UTC. After that, we'll have another launch of a Falcon 9 from Florida, carrying a batch of Starlink V2 mini-satellites. Liftoff is scheduled to occur within a 4.5-hour window that opens on December 6th at 0400 UTC. And to add to the lengthy list of launches planned for next week, we will also have the third flight of the Zhukic-2 rocket, the first Methalox rocket to reach orbit. Its launch date is still fluid, but right now it looks to be targeting December 6th at 2330 UTC. I'm Ryan Caton for NSF, thanks for watching, and Alicia will see you all again next week to recap this week in Spaceflight.